So if this sounds like you, this podcast and this episode is for you. Okay, so let's say you listen to the Andrew Huberman podcast. Very scientific, gives you, you know, uh, control studies, double blind studies, and, you know, 20,000 people did this and this was the result. This is what happens in the hippocampus, the amygdala, the neocortex, etc. You're like, wow, cool. This supplement does that. Three hours with no screens before bed uh, does that. No phone before bed does that. Oh, I shouldn't look at my phone right in the morning. Oh, I should get 10 minutes of sunlight every morning. And if I do that with the cold plunge and then 60 minutes of exercise and then delete all my social media and then smell trees every day and do forest bathing, then I'll be good. And if this sounds like you, that you consume these podcasts, self-help books, other mental health podcasts by therapists and other things, great. But then let's be honest with ourselves. And when we're honest with ourselves, we open the door to the dark parts that we don't want to see. And the dark parts really try to stay hidden. Uh, they don't want us, the observer, to look at them. But when you look at them, the truth shall set you free. So this is what happens. If we're honest with ourselves, and if I'm honest with myself, if we're honest with ourselves and I'm honest with myself, I don't implement a lot of that stuff. It's, uh, it's not realistic for me. A lot of people can't integrate it into their days. The cost of doing it isn't worth the benefit. They've tried it once. It didn't work. They, they don't have the you know will to do it over a six-month year period. The anxiety you or me or other people experience is too high, meaning you need some medical intervention. I'm sorry. A cold plunge is not the cure for everything. And it's a fad, and I'm sure that some of the science is there, but in 10 years, we're going to be like, oh, we, we really thought that was an everything thing. Turns out it was just another thing, okay? This happens all the time. Adkins diets, and then keto diets come in, and then carnivore diets come in. And if you keep up with the internet that way, man, you are going to be uh, a leaf in the wind. You got to stay grounded with this stuff. And I've learned that stepping away from it and this is what this episode's about, seeing what works for you. It doesn't matter what the scientific community says. And ugh, I, this could be an hour episode. I'm going to share five things with you that are very, very um, easy to integrate into your life. Very easy, very useful. One of them will 100% help and you haven't done these things before. But one of the things that I like to do in this podcast too because I just love speaking about mental health and I'll do this for the rest of my life because if you feel like what's the point of all of this, which is a great question to ask, you know, you can be okay with asking these existential questions. When I ask what's the point, what's the meaning of life, I just come to one thing, one conclusion really, that it doesn't matter if we're a brains in a vat theory, if this is the matrix, if uh, we're controlled, if this is a simulation, it doesn't matter. I know one thing for sure, that pain is very, very real. Psychological pain and physical pain. I know that is very, very real. Okay? Joy is too, all these things, but pain is really, really real. So regardless of the point of all of this, if we know that pain is real, anxiety is terrible depression is debilitating then the purpose may as well be you know to help people along their way to make life a little less painful a little more joyful to relieve pain along this journey we didn't ask to be here so why not do our best to just relieve the suffering from others and the best way to do that is to get to know ourselves first see what works for us and then help others do the same that's what this podcast is always all about and my mission here with the Being Human podcast and scottstmarie.com, coaching, mindfulness sessions, retreats, whatever it is, talking about uh, Christ and, and the, the Gospels, it's, it's, it's all of that, okay? So these five things you're going to love and let's get started, all right? First of all, I want to acknowledge every single person that has their notifications on. That when I upload an episode, you're the first to watch and you're the first to comment. If you are the first to watch and you haven't commented before, send me a comment right when you watch this video. I'd love to respond and say, hey, Scott, chicken cutlets. And when you say chicken cutlets, I'll know you're one of those people and I will fully acknowledge you and I'd like to. I'd like to say thank you. 
I want to give my thanks and move it into a direction. So please let me know. Chicken cutlets. If that's you, comment. And I'd really like to say a sincere thank you to everybody because you're listening, um, supporting me, laughing with me, crying with me, doing our best to to relieve and help people with anxiety and depression. And in this cra- crazy world, um, you're making a big difference in my life and the lives of others. So here we go. Number one of five. Ready? Ready? Ready, Scott. Oh, hey, Blue Jay. What's going on? Nothing much. Thanks for coming to the game yesterday. Oh, yeah. We played Tampa Bay. It was a great game at the Rogers Center. Yeah, we're playing again today. Bet the White Sox. Oh, the White Sox. Yeah. All right. That's for the kids. Now, exercise number one. Two by ones. You can call it a double and a one. You can call it two for one pizza. It doesn't matter. It's two inhales. One long exhale. Two inhales quickly. One long exhale. And you got to give this one a name. This is part one of many. This is only five. I'm going to do about 100 this year. So we got ones like, you know, uh, parasympathetic activation. And we're going to do all sorts of stuff in the next video uh, for really acute anxiety in moments. And then for, you know, longer lasting stuff. So this is one. Watch me. Or listen to me. Through the nose twice. And then exhale through the mouth. This is a guarantee. This is a guarantee it'll help. If not 1%, it'll help. You're not going to feel worse after doing this. So do it with me. Inhale twice. And then through the mouth. Really good. When you're breathing out the mouth there, focus like it's almost like going through a tube, like a straw, like you're really trying to push it straight ahead of you in a perfect line. So it's not one of these like (sighs) things, right? Or it's not one, you know, you get those people in yoga class, you ever been? And there's this dude in the back and he's like, yeah, I've done yoga before. Yeah, I've done this. I mean, my sister laugh all the time. It's this guy in the back and it's like... (sighs) I'm like, bro, oh my God, we know you can do the cool breathing through the throat. God damn. So, two in the nose, one, like almost giving a kiss with your lips, like that and pushing right through, okay? That's like, it really makes a difference. Do it 10 times, so... And you'll be amazed how long your exhales can be and how after 10 of these, you'll come back to the body. You'll feel a little more rested, a little more grounded. So that's one. Write it down. Call it your two for one. Call it sniff, sniff, blow. I don't care what you call it. Have some fun with it. Okay. A big thing about anxiety is it is a very serious feeling, but if we can add a little bit of levity little bit of lightness, just a touch of grace and a touch of humor, it goes a long way. Um, next one, this is this one's a little more difficult, I'd say. It takes a lot of practice, and I'm always in practice mode. So, S-W-I, sit with it. Sit with it. When I am struggling when I have a problem when I need to discern something when I'm not sure which way to go uh, when I'm pissed off there's all kinds of things that I do I got a large toolbox and depending on what I need I take action in some way that action can be lying down I've told you all before lying down uh, listening to medieval sounds construction sounds listening to uh I'll do it in the next episode, Star Trek Next Generation, because it's got the hum in the background of the bridge and of the ship, you know? So there's that as an action. Another action, another thing you can use is SWI, sit with it. You can call it whatever you want. And this is what I'd like you to try and ask yourself here. You sit in the anxiety, okay? You bring to mind compassion and not judging what you're going through. You can do it with me right now. 
And I'll do another recording for you just with this technique. But this is what that um, with uh, the eight weeks with Scott, scottstmarie.com slash eight weeks with Scott. It's in the description. This is what we're going to really be focusing on is self-compassion and anxiety. It's the one thing that's helped me so, so much. So you sit with it. Sit with all of it. And you're going to ask yourself a few questions. One, very important one. What do I need right now? Huge, huge. You think about a moment where you're feeling anxious. There, a large part of is it of it is you can't give yourself exactly what you need in that moment because of people around you, because of the environment, because the tools you really want aren't there, right? So in the middle of anxiety, if you could snap your fingers and you could be back in front of your TV or with somewhere that feels really, really safe. You can be back in the woods. You can be on the beach. You can be alone somewhere. If you could snap your fingers, would that help? And if the answer is yes, that means that in times of anxiety, you can't give yourself exactly, exactly what you necessarily need. But we can snap our fingers and teleport. So the next best thing is in those moments, ask yourself, Okay, what, what do I need that would, that would make me feel better? That would calm me down a little bit. That would tell me that, you know, things are okay and things are going to be safe and they are safe. Okay, you know what? I'm going to tell the people that I'm with right now, I got to step out and I got to go home. That's exactly what I need. Okay? I'm going to tell myself, you know what? I need, oh, uh, yeah, one of those. Yo, toss me one of those Coke Zeros, man. Oh, aspartame, uh, too bad the studies they shown prove were like, you know, a thousand milligrams of this stuff will damage you and increase your rate for cancer. Just a little Coke Zero won't do much. So I'm going to have a little Coke Zero. Yeah, why not? A little carbonated water. You know what? I just need a lie down right now. You know, I just got to go for a walk around the block. Asking yourself the biggest question for self-compassion is what do I need right now? Because a lot of us who've dealt with anxiety and deal with it, our needs have been neglected. We've been people pleasers. We've been perfectionists. We are perfectionists. We're not giving ourselves what we need. We're giving other people what they seem to need and what we're projecting onto them. So first question, sit with it. Ask yourself, what do I need right now? What do I need? And how can I show myself kindness and compassion? Okay. And the next thing that it'd be cool to realize, and it might be true for you, it's true for me, is in some way, are you doubting yourself when you feel anxious? Are you doubting your ability to perform, your ability to deal with what might come up? You're anxious for a presentation that you have the next day at work. You're anxious after work coming home because you're like, my boss gave me the side eye and this person did this and I don't know, I don't know if I sent that email right and I did that. And you come home anxious because in a way you doubt what happened and how you're going to deal with it. You doubt the way you sent that email and you're like, I, I should have done better. I shouldn't have sent it. So you doubt the integrity that you have at work. Oh, my boss looked at me that way. So you doubt your ability to actually confront them the next day, right? So I wonder if you're doubting yourself some way. In some way, you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so anxious, so I'm doubting my ability to overcome. I'm doubting my ability to rest and, and you know, this will pass, but I'm doubting my ability to let go and just let it pass. I don't think you need self-doubt anymore, man. I think you've you've survived and and explored these feelings for a long time and you know they do pass you don't have to doubt your abilities anymore there's always more we can learn hence this podcast i'm gonna give you a few more but ask yourself those those few questions how can i give myself what i need right now how can i direct kindness and compassion to me and what am i doubting about myself right now what am i doubting now when you're feeling this way it's not time to tear apart your life right? It's not time for that. But if this little bit of reflection can bring you ease, then do it. If it doesn't, don't do it. That's why we have a million tools to see what works. And that's what I really don't like about these prescriptive plans that are put on YouTube 
especially with supplementation. It's like it's a one size fits all. No, a lot of these things won't work with you. Do you know how different and unique your neurochemistry is? Your biological function. Yes, you have a liver. Yes, you have a heart and lungs and, and similar neurotransmitters, of course, but all in different ranges. Your biology changes based on how much you're feeling anxiety. Some people feel it more in the body and somatic anxiety. Other people in rumination in their, in their, in their mind and thoughts and thinking and cognitive distortions. You're so different. So don't feel bad if, if you're reading something and it doesn't work or you're trying something and it doesn't work. It's like with medications, which is the next one on our list. Medications... You think about how different people's neurobiology is and, and their genetics and all of these ways that we metabolize these things and metabolize information too, but metabolize things biochemically is because that's what there's so many different medications and you go on, or supplements, you go on this website, you're like, oh no, that person had a bad reaction. Oh, that person, it really helped them with, with sleep. Oh, that person, it made them experience insomnia. That made their depression worse. That made their depression so much better. That gave them panic attacks. That removed their panic attacks. Like the spectrum is massive. So number three here is medication. If you're dealing with anxiety and you've been dealing with, with it for a long time and it's a struggle to do things without a real, uh, a, a real, let's say, battle in the mind and body. That you're constantly fighting. Um, I'm not promoting medication. I'm not condoning it. I know that it's hurt some people. And I know that it's helped a lot of people. The, you, you can't have a black and white with medication here. I'm sorry. And I know there's videos out there that people condone the whole thing. There's a myth of mental illness. And that just increases the stigma tenfold. And I fucking hate that. Excuse my language. But I fucking hate that shit. I hate that people are condoning SSRIs, SNRIs, uh, benzodiazepines. Like, yeah, I know there's addiction here. I know that withdrawal is tough. I've been through it all. I'm not talking about this shit because I don't know about it. I know about it. I know how much it helps. I know how painful it is to get off. You got to see what's right for you and talk to your doctor. Don't watch these, these podcasts that are just like, you know... Um, naturopathic medicine is the only way or pharmaceuticals are the only way which i don't think many people advertise that it's the only way there's a balance you can use both there's so many medications out there that do a real good job with anxiety there are and if you're one person who's against pharmaceuticals i will judge a little bit i'll judge a little bit okay because I believe that if someone is truly against all pharma and big pharma, they haven't been in enough pain. You get in a car accident and you're impaled with, with glass from the mirror or for the windshield and boom, boom, boom. And you go to the hospital and they're like, all right, morphine and we're going to do this, this, this. And you're like, no, no, I'm okay. Don't worry about the IV. Let's do, op let's do open surgery and I'll be awake for it. No anesthetic. Don't worry about it. Come on. We know these things save lives. We know um, that there's a time and place for them. There's a place for abuse, of course. But there's a place for regimented medical supervision and where these things work and they give people their lives back. Their quality of life. So if medication is something that you haven't tried, it's something that you have tried, it's something that you're curious about, talk to a doctor. Talk to your doctor. Be like, yo, I don't want to try it right now. But I just want to see like what the options are. Um, give me a few ideas. Uh, here are my symptoms. Here's kind of what's going on in my life. Um, and, and just park it for a little bit. Put it to the side. At least you have some info. Like why do people think that we need to act on everything right away? You don't. Maybe get some information. See how it sits with you. And then maybe try it if you want. Okay? There's a lot of options. And for acute anxiety, I know some guys I went to high school with... Um, they carry around uh, like lorazepam or Xanax and they'll carry around like 10 pills and it'll last them a year. <laughs> There's no way you're getting addicted to that. If, if you just have it, sometimes people have it just as a security, just as a security blanket to remove that self-doubt that if something happens, 
I do have the ability to cope with it because I have something I can take on those really stressful moments. Fear of flying, I'm going to have a panic attack when I fly. At least I got a tool there that, that can help me and I don't have to worry about not being able to cope because I have a coping tool right here, okay? Yeah, again, I'm not promoting, I'm not condoning. Everyone is different. Do not compare. Don't read all the forums. Just see what works for you. And when you do something that works for you that isn't prescriptive based on all these studies or all these people that you've met online or read forums, this is a, a huge, huge antidote to anxiety in itself that you're trusting yourself, that you're not just following a blueprint on other people's biology, that you're really getting to know what works for you. What are my personal triggers, right? What sets me off a little bit? When do I get that sense like, ooh, that's not hitting, that's not sitting right with me? When do I feel joy? What makes me happy? What do I want to learn? What do I want to practice? That, oh my goodness, that's another episode. That will calm the anxiety waves for sure because you are sure of yourself. And there's confidence in that when you're sure, when you say, I know what I know, I like what I like, I feel what I feel. It doesn't matter what you got. I know what I'm dealing with. And that's enough for me. And that it's in itself is, is real self-confidence and it's autonomy. And we know that a big thing with depression, anxiety, mental illness is you need some autonomy in your life. You need some responsibility. You need some structure. And by, by implementing these things, that gives it to you. By not just following a blueprint, take some action for yourself and see what works for you. Does that make sense? All right. Next one, Epsom salts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I learned about these in high school. Shout out to my gym teacher. Started running in high school and jogging. First, he recommended running shoes rather than basketball shoes. That changed my life. And then these Epsom salt things. And I, th I think you probably all know about these, but let me see. Let me tell you why. One cup of Epsom salts in a bath, just one cup. You can maybe go two if you want, but start with one cup. Basically, magnesium will will absorb through the skin, and that's what helps the muscle soreness. That's why people do that, but you get a calm body, you get a calm mind, right? So you relax the body a lot. Now, a lot of you are thinking, Scott, why don't I take the magnesium supplement? That's really complicated, okay? What do you take? Magnesium citrate, magnesium oxide, magnesium glycinate, what do you take? 100 milligrams, 200, 500? When do you take it? With meals? Do you take it before bed? There's a lot of, of changes in metabolic activity through the day and how these medications or supplements affect people. Look at it yourself. Magnesium made me stay up all night. Magnesium, higher doses, gives you diarrhea, which is why if you're constipated, you take 500 milligrams clean you out like that if you're not used to it. So there's a lot of differences. And the safe part about Epsom salts, rarely, rarely, rarely is there a reaction like that because it goes through so so slowly through the skin and is, is absorbed into the muscle and tissue. So I would say if you're having a tough go, nice hot bath, get some rubber duckies, baby. Get some of that Epsom salts in. Bring a book in. Oh, you want you want to act like a you want to be a king because this is more than kings had in the year 1820, 1400s. This is better than we had in 1980, 1990, 2000. You get in the bath. This is what I do sometimes. You get in the bath, Epsom salts, tub on. You get the laptop on the toilet because my toilet's right there. You get the laptop on. You put a show on. Oh, you just lounge. Oh my God, you're a king. You're a king. And all this stuff about like you, you look at these videos online and the anxiety stuff is so um, prescriptive in the way that you got to like really overcome. You got to push through. You got to do all this shit. You got to be uncomfortable to be comfortable. You got to be uncomfortable with being comfortable. You got to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. You got to really push. And hedonism is one thing, but damn, guys, get some pleasure going on. Life is meant to be, in, in a lot of parts, to be rejoice and be glad. God is love, so love what's around you. Love the people around you. Love yourself. 
right? What's with all this, with this, this suffering we put on ourselves to achieve things? Relax in the tub. Enjoy what God's given you, what evolution has, has you know, brought us to, what your ancestors have fought for. I know there's the argument that our ancestors looking on us now will be like, you lazy ass. And yeah, sure, if you're just fapping and watching TV all day and doing nothing, that's cool. But if I feel like if your ancestors saw you, whoop, if your ancestors saw you chilling in the bath after a, you know, some anxiety, some hard day's work, they're really dealing with, with life on your shoulders, and they see you like, damn, man, we worked for Scott, and he worked pretty hard, and now he's in a bath and just chilling. Yeah, that probably feels awesome. Well done, dude. So you got to give yourself from that. So Epsom salt bath, breathing two for one, sit with it, medication. And I got my favorite one here. Got my favorite. And that is obviously guitar. That's going to be a new episode. I want to share with you a song that I wrote that is so deep and dark. What you can do with anxiety is you can create with it. But this is the Baroque era. You all know I love my classical, but it's not about the music. It's about this book is definitely an antique, came with a, a collection of records I got, and I smell it. Now, we know that old factory, baby, we know that the sense of smell is one that, like, juices up memories from the past. You know when you smell something and it brings you right back to grade six? I smelled like perfumes. I'm like, oh my God, that's my grade four teacher. Holy crap, right? And this, smell this. Like, did you see my shoulders just drop? Oh my God, let me tell you something. Oh, it's grandpa's basement, man. Oh, the safest place. God bless him. A little bit of cedar in there, a little bit of mustiness. Oh, it takes you back to a simple time. That's one smell I go to. You literally see me, if you if you had a Nest Cam right here and looking at the life of Scott St. Marie, come back from the office, come back from a talk, doing my thing, come back from a friend's, I'm like time to unwind and chill. I walk through that door, I'll put on a record on the 1960s uh, receiver and the Sony 1970s record player baby, put on something, I'll take this, <laughs> I'll take this book or I'll smell the record. Um, uh, the record sleeve because that smells real good and I'll be like I'll just have a seat I'll just have a sit on the couch man does the the stress melt away another thing so I'm while I'm saying this think about something that's good for you to smell you see this is the other thing this is the other thing about prescriptive treatments people will be like lavender smell some of that lavender no one has prescribed prescribed an antique book you know what I'm saying? So what do you feel like you want to smell? I don't care if you want to smell a black tip marker, a permanent marker. You sniff that once a day even. It's not going to do shit, okay? A, a, a little, um, buy a box of Crayolas and smell that. Smell the, the pencil shavings after a sharpen. What brings you back to a sense of safety? That's what the smell's about. It's not about lavender... Like, I haven't even been in a field of lavender. It brings up no memory whatsoever. Lavender doesn't work for me. It smells nice, but it doesn't come close to an antique book from an old place with mustiness and mothballs. It doesn't come close. So that's one thing. Another thing I wanted to show you, where is it? Here it is. This is, I think it was in the thumbnail, if that's what I choose to put up. This, my friend, frankincense. Now you burn this and it smells like church. So that smells like wooden pews. Smells like the air in a church when you walk in with all the old stone. They used to heat them with, with coal so you have the black stone on the outside. And in the hot summer days, you there's there's not a lot of windows. So there's, there's it's pretty cool in those churches, which is amazing think about before ac people would chill in the church it's the, so you get that like humid mustiness from this frankincense and i love lighting it up and you just sit back 
think about this for a drug. I walk in, put on a record, smell that vinyl, smell the Baroque era thing, wall lighting frankincense. I'm going to OD. Oh my God. So this is, these are, are a few things, guys. I know it's a little weird. And there's a bunch of other weird stuff I want to show you, practical things, but also it's not just about finding a meditation that's been proven, uh, doing things that are are necessarily popular or things that you, you've read that they work and then you do them based on a study, based on a popular YouTube video. See what calms you down. It can be anything. Like I haven't shared anything with you guys i do some weird stuff this is just one of them like do you water plants do you want to garden do you want to pet the leaves on your money tree that i got here and just touch those plants uh do you want to do you want to you know read the bible do you want to play an instrument do you want to lie down on your acupressure mat i got one of those do you want to roll out i'm going to do one about specific exercises later on so watch out for part two there's so many tools and the last thing I'd like to do before we end here is to acknowledge everyone who makes it all the way through. So say uh, beef cutlets, and I'll know that you watched it all the way through. And if you say chicken cutlets and beef cutlets, you're a super fan. Oh my gosh, I got to send you something in the mail or, or just give my thanks to you because I really appreciate it. So one last thing, I want to acknowledge, you know, a lot of you who deal with anxiety it's not easy. It sucks. You could say it's not fair. Got dealt a shit hand sometimes, genetically, environmentally, well, how we grew up, sure. Got dealt a shit hand with uh, we weren't, you know, given access to opportunity and, and education and we were not making a lot of money and, you know, so financial stress is there. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge that. And that's tough. It's tough. It's really, really tough. But sometimes the circumstance isn't what only defines you. It's, it's always, you know, how you deal with the circumstance and how you really make the best of what's right in front of you and what's around you. And I'm so blessed to have what I have and I, I do my best to be grateful for it. But sometimes in a moment of anxiety, the whole your whole life seems like shit. There's nothing to be grateful for. And when we're doing that sit with it exercise, sit with it and acknowledge that it doesn't feel good. Acknowledge that this sucks. You can acknowledge these things. You can be honest with yourself. The truth, truth shall set you free. Don't be like, okay, everything's going to be okay. I'm fine. This is a safe place right now. I'm safe. That's a technique that people, oh, it's such a lame thing people share, man. It's like, you know, you're not in any danger. And anxiety is a response to a perceived threat and danger. So tell yourself that it's actually safe and there's no danger around you. That's so stupid. Thanks for getting this far in the podcast. It's so stupid. Your body is perceiving danger. This is the reaction right now. And to change a thought and to do this cognitively with just being like, oh, I'm actually safe. There's nothing wrong here. Mm. Come on, man. If that works for you, great. You're not watching the video because you got the cure. For those of us who that doesn't work, yeah, try the breathing. Acknowledge that it sucks. Acknowledge I don't feel safe right now. I'm not feeling really good. I'm... Ooh, okay. All right. Here it is. It's right here with me. I'm sitting with it. Okay. There it is. And what we when we look at things that we're scared of and we look at things uh, that frighten us and we look at fear right in the face and it loses its power. And that's what we're doing when we sit with it. Breathing two by one. Sit with it. Medication, Epsom salt, smells of safety, wonder, and antiques. God bless you all. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Uh, plenty of episodes on this podcast, plenty of links to click on, plenty of things. Uh, I hope you trust me. So anything you click on or subscribe for, uh, it's all good. I'm not trying to do anything crazy. And uh, oh, shoot, there's one more thing. Uh, 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 uh,
I forget. Dang. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm not sure. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Oh, if you're in a, an acute state of anxiety, we're going to do a separate episode for that. But the the medication for like uh, benzos, that's for real acute circumstances. So that's something for sure. But for real acute, if you want a video and if you're feeling real low and uh, there's a video I have called Waiting for the Tide. And I think that'll really... It spoke to quite a few people, and I think it'll really help in those moments where you just wait it out. All right. God bless. Thank you so much, everyone. Can't wait to see your comments, and thank you for, for your support, and keep at it. Keep at it. Be gentle and compassionate with yourself. Bye-bye.